Let's talk about Stockton's present, where we are right here today. In 2013, after coming out of that horrific record 71 homicides, homicides were decreased by 60% in 2013. In 2014, we had a slight increase. We had a slight increase uh, in homicides. And basically tonight, as I stand before you, we have 43 homicides compared to 47 that we had at this time last year. So we're about right on, you know, stagnant. We're about right the same. We have a couple under, but obviously the last weekend didn't help us. Um, so I always tell you straight up how life is, what's going on, and I'm gonna tell you, we have 43 homicides. I don't want one homicide in this city. It is hard enough to go to one funeral and sit there. There is no words you can say. If anyone wants this job, you want to go to folks' houses, and you walk in, nothing that you can say that comes out of your mouth can comfort a family that just lost a kid. Nothing. So you know what I do? I just sit there and I cry with them. And that's, they appreciate that. We got to stop these homicides. Policing and deterrence. On page 10, it talks about basically what my plan would be. In your packets that some of you have, the ones that got here early enough, you have a map of the hot spots of Stockton. It's scientifically proven in our city where the crime happens. Now, there are random things that happen. And that's the truth. This is the, the bad and ugly that we're talking about here. You cannot predict always where the crime will be. If there's a drug deal gone bad on Pacific Avenue and bullet holes hit Chuck E. Cheese, nobody in a million years could have guessed that. So those type of things will happen. So when people are on social media, say, Mayor, why can't you stop the crime? Fine, tell me where all the bad guys are gonna be before they're there, I'll wait there with undercover police officers and we'll get them. If you know where they're gonna be, please tell me. So, some of those things are gonna be random. But we do know where the hot spots are. We know that in Kentfield and Bianchi, there's gonna be guns and there's gonna be shootings. We know that on Kelly Drive, there's gonna be shootings. We no longer need to be a reactive police department where you're in a car, you're driving along, and you hear the calls come on the radio, and there's domestic violence, and it comes up and it has like a number four on it. You know, there's a fight somewhere, and it comes up and has a number five on it. There's a robbery in progress, and it has like a number two on it. You hear those come to the radio like, yeah, let's go get them, let's go get them, let's get the person we have time, come on, let's go get them. I can't do it. We gotta go by protocol. Protocol is priority one, shots fired in this neighborhood. We gotta go, we gotta see if we can get the gun, or a homicide happened. On my ride along, I saw 21 officers come to one location to secure a scene. They're looking for the suspects that flee. There's people out there directing traffic. There's somebody out there keeping the angry mob away from the crime scene. Because every you pull up there and everyone has cameras on your face. And I get out like, hey, you guys got all these cameras. Did any of you see the guys run by with the AK-47? <laughs> so 21 officers get dispatched for one call. That makes us a reactive department when we're only going from call to call to call. So hiring the officers were important. Getting them upgraded equipment was important. But it's not going to be the answer completely for Stockton. You could have 2,000 or 3,000 police officers in the city and there still would be crime because criminals aren't going to do it in front of police officers, right? So what I'm proposing is that we meet them on the battlefield, that we get portable, little classroom portables donated from school districts, or we get mobile command centers. That Portables are free. They want to get rid of them in school districts. Right, Gloria? Yeah. She'll give them to us. We have a police mobile command center. Maybe we can get more. 
but those things should be parked right in the heart of all those neighborhoods. And I don't care if people think it doesn't look nice. I don't care. I want to stop the crime. I'm sick and tired of it. I get hundreds of text messages a day, and 15 of them are about robberies in progress and crimes that are happening. And a lot of them happen to be in the same areas. Now, I don't know if you guys that travel, if you go to Mexico or some other countries, but they, they drive around, they have their sirens on all the time, right? So I'm like, oh, what's happening? What's happening? They're like, no, they just do that. That makes people think twice about doing a crime. So I think in those neighborhoods, there should be a big red light, and it should be on one of those portable units. We don't have to staff it with a police officer. We can staff it with sentinels and volunteers who are there to, to give messages, to relay messages to the police department. But also, I want to propose, propose something that needs to be done. If we don't have enough officers for deterrence, because we don't have them in the schools hardly anymore, the SRO, school resource officers, then we should pull some of those officers, excuse me, well, th then what we should do is we should hire former military who are now private security. And they should be in these neighborhoods. Now, I'm not going to tell them to engage. They are there for deterrence and to relay messages to the police department. But it's time to fill these ranks and this is, this, is, this is my plan on how to do it. We have the security camera systems, and those things work really well. If somebody commits a crime, and you're within the vicinity of that camera, it's gonna zoom in. We have techs that are on the SEB building downtown, and they will find those criminals, get their license plate, their face, everything. That's a good thing, we've been upgrading the camera system. Project Ceasefire has been out there walking neighborhoods with a lot of the pastors in this room, walking neighborhoods, trying to make neighborhoods safer. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Ceasefire, Ceasefire is a program where they take folks that are most likely to reoffend, that are coming out of the uh, prison system, and they're giving them um, really what I call the stick. They're saying, if you don't change your ways, we're going to be on you, and we're going to make life very uncomfortable for you. And that's what they're doing because they know statistically some of those folks will commit another crime. Now, I want to take that a step further because if you have a stick, you have to have a carrot, in my opinion. And so everyone in this audience, you're always hearing about people saying, we believe in second chances. And I say that Stockton is a second chance city. Maybe we all haven't made the best decisions every day in our life, right? It's hard to get a job with a tattoo on your face. It's hard to get a job when you have six or seven felonies, right? Let's be honest. So hopefully, in the future, the city and the county can have jobs waiting for them, even at 10 or 11 bucks an hour. But these jobs, they'll help us pick up graffiti, they'll help us clean up trash piles in the middle of the city, they'll help us, they'll help us be peacekeepers and go out to existing gang members and tell them no more. Um, I had a mayor's gun, gun buyback uh, program. I put uh, $5,000 of my own money, and people came and sold their guns. Now, I don't want the guns, uh, I don't want the legal guns. I don't want, I, I don't, I'm trying to get the illegal guns off the streets. Anonymous, people can come turn those in. I don't want people on me saying, hey, mayor, you're trying to take my gun. No, I don't want your gun. Keep it. Keep it. I like Texas and Arizona about it. Hey, keep your gun. But, but sometimes if you have extra guns laying around your house, those are the ones that get stolen, and those are the ones that get used in crime.